Hi, my name is Daniel Hui and I'm the director of Demons, which is showing in the forum section of the Berlinale. You love what he has been doing to you, don't you? In fact, you wanted more. No! Why didn't you kill him right there and then? He was sleeping so soundly. I was just happy that I got the room. What's wrong with that? There is nothing wrong with that, of course. I just want you to be honest with yourself. I am honest with myself. What he's doing to me is wrong. Don't look at your brother. He can't hear you now. Oh, really? Go! 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 <laughs> Hi, welcome to the 33rd Teddy Award. I am Jean-Bor Bobak, and we are going to have a discussion about the film Demons with director Daniel Hui. Hi, Daniel. Welcome Hi. to the festival. Welcome to the Teddy Thank Award. You. Um, your film Demon deals uh, with a lot of exploitation, abuse and trauma yeah. uh, and for me what was uh, really striking is that I felt the film has a particular urgency with with all the recent um, news in the media especially regarding the entertainment industry yeah. and exploitation and abuse within that did you have this in mind when when you started to work on on this project uh, no actually I we started making the film before the Okay. Hashtag Me Too ha movement happened. So we actually started... Uh, well, actually I've been trying to make this film for a long time, obviously, but I, like, okay. we only started really working on it in like, the beginning of 2016. So yeah. that was like maybe uh, 10 months before Hashtag Me Too yeah. happened. Yeah, so it was just a coincidence that while we were... Oh, sorry, that was a year and uh, 10 months before Hashtag Me Too. Okay. Right? Yeah, because yeah. that was 2017. Yeah. So it was really a coincidence that while I was editing the film, suddenly the scandal with Harvey Weinstein came yeah. out and it was uh -huh. a direct mirror of what happened in the film. What happens in yeah. the film, yeah. Except, well, in the film it's a theatre company, whereas yeah, right. in reality it's a cinema. Right. Yeah. yeah. And what did you think about these developments within the industry with all these movements like Me, Me Too and Time's Up? Uh, yeah, of course, like, I, I think it's a, a very important and amazing moment for victims of sexual abuse and trauma to speak out and to find strength in each other, you know. I mean, it's, it's really incredible that we are experiencing this moment, but also I always hope that like, it could, the conversation could be a bit more inclusive of mm -hmm. people of all kinds of gender identity and also sexual orientation. Um, I right. mean, I, but I feel like that is always the... the you know what I hope for when, yeah. you know, when these issues happen. Right. Yeah. So as the narrative progresses, um, and especially regarding the whole outcome of the film, right. um, the question sort of arises that uh, how far can one go um, in the name of art? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think uh, in art we. Uh, and especially cinema, maybe that we have this kind of, especially directors and producers have this unchecked privilege and power that uh, yeah. we are able to push to the extremes. And I think uh, in art, what always happens is that the extremes are always uh, valued, you know. And yeah. you know, for I think it comes from the tradition of how art has been mm. thought about and talked about over the, like, the centuries, but. At the same time, this gives obviously the, the you know it's very significant that hashtag Me Too happened yeah. in cinema, you know, right. first because um, 
I mean, the, it blew up in cinema because it, it, in, in art, everything just is always more heightened and extre you know, uh, exaggerated in yeah. a sense. You know? yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I really found it interesting that um, you play a lot with uh, genre elements, mm -hmm. especially with horror. Mm -hmm. What drawn you to, to this particular genre when it came to yeah. this story? Well, uh, from the very beginning, it was a, actually a, it's, 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 a very, it's a very personal story for me. So I wanted to portray a lot of my feelings of anxiety and mm -hmm. depression. And, um, and you know, the best genre for that is yeah. of course horror because it's a very physical genre and right. it takes people yeah. into that into that space, you know? yeah. so the, it was the, from the very beginning I knew it was going to be a mm. horror movie because it was a nightmarish movie. Yeah, Great, yeah. Uh, and you pointed out now that uh, it's, it's a very personal story as right. well. Um, interestingly, the personal becomes very political right. within the movie. Right. Um, what, what do you think about, about that and what was your way of dealing with that? I mean, um, Coming as a film director, and you know, it's also not a coincidence that the the abuser in the movie, his name is Daniel. You know, right. I'm not saying that I, I obviously I'm not saying that I abused. <laughs> or I obviously hope that I didn't give anybody trauma yeah. to making movies. But you know, I'm always extremely aware and kind of actually uncomfortable about my position of power and yeah. um, in the film in in making a film. So um, that is something that I wanted to uh, question myself, you know, mm. through this whole process, I wanted to yeah. in really question myself about how I, how I proceed with, yeah. you know, art making. You know, so obviously, you know, Vicky's story, who is the, the person who is being abused, is very much my story. And then, right. but you know, the story of the director who abuses her is yeah. one of my fears, you know. So I mean, it was one of my biggest fears uh -huh. actually. So yeah, I definitely wanted to turn that fear into a horror movie. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, so do you think that maybe the film itself and and making this movie right. um, did it function as sort of a, a therapy? Maybe like yeah. did it have like that kind of elements to yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. I think the, it's not just me, but a lot of people on the right team. We, we've been through a lot of uh, what was depicted in movies. So yeah. for all of us, it was a kind of a, almost like an exorcism oh, uh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of our demons. So the, at the end, I mean, the final scene, somebody asked me once whether it was a trial, and I always told them that it's more of an exorcism. Yeah, right. So, I mean, I, I think I'm very lucky because I had a team who, you know, we all really trusted each other. Yeah. So we could push each other to extremes and we knew when to, uh -huh. you know, stop. Stop, like, basically. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, yeah. we were very careful about each other's boundaries. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, but, but because we trusted each other so much, we allowed ourselves, all of ourselves to go to the extreme. Yeah. 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 To be created a very safe space. Yeah. It. Yeah. yeah, it really sounds like that. Yeah. You kind of had to confront these inner demons right. while, while while doing this uh, project. Right. And then uh, sort of connecting to that, it's um, what was very prevalent in the movie is that you use a lot of mirror shots. Right. There is like a lot of mirroring in the yeah. also on the level of the narrative between uh, Danielle and Vicky, right. the two main protagonists, they sort of seem to mirror each other right, constantly, right, right. Um, which obviously proposes a sort of a psychoanalytical reading mm -hmm. uh, to it, especially with the notions of the double or the mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. um, so, what what did you wanna? Why did you wanna work with, with these yeah. things in particular? I mean, I can't say I know like uh, very in depth about psychoanalysis, mm -hmm. but. Um, my main consideration, there are two main considerations. One is the consideration of the victim, the relationship between the victim and the abuser. Yeah. So I've been thinking about how um, once something like that happens, the yeah. two become inseparable. So we become yeah. part of each other. I mean, it's not just that the victim can never get rid of the abuser. Yeah. It's also the other case, which is the abuser cannot, uh, can never get rid of the victim. Mm. You know? So we become entwined in this very, um, very intimate, kind of, almost intimate relationship. 
Yeah. Um, the other the other thing I wanted to think about was also how when we experience trauma, we kind of uh, to my understanding of trauma is that we split into two, you know. Mm -hmm. We yeah. become the person that we, that um, existed before the trauma, which actually, you know, um, do, does not exist anymore. And we, it's right. like hard to even remember that person. But that is the person or the persona that con continues living in the world. That is the yeah. person that people perceive you as. Yeah. But internally, you're not the same person. And yeah. so this conflict about how to resolve these two people mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, of course, like people with multiple traumas get like, for me, like, you know, we, it, this becomes multiplied, yeah. you know, so, so for me, like the, the, the metaphor, or not, not really the metaphor, but the image of the double mm -hmm. in the film is a literal manifestation of these so-called demons. Yeah, right. Uh, and mm -hmm. they run out of control, you know, sometimes. Yeah. I mean, especially I feel like when you experience an anxiety attack or yeah. You know, you experience something extremely triggering to you. You, it's almost as if the demons have gained control over you. Yeah. You know, so your emotions have gained control over you. Yeah. definitely. It's a kind of possession. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah um, also, what uh, what I noticed is that there are a lot of um, extreme close-ups right. uh, within the movie. So all these characters come really close, but then at the same time there is. A sort of dissection of them, like we don't, right. like particular parts of the body are just dissected from the rest right. in a way. Right. And then, of course, there is also a very strong um, theme or motif of cannibalism in it. Right. So I was kind of wondering how these two come together, and also what was your aim with um, with bringing these characters so extremely close that it even makes maybe the audience is uncomfortable right. uncomfortable a bit. Right. Yeah. I mean the the the, uh, the main intention was to make the audience uncomfortable and okay. make the body very strange and because right. from yeah. the point of view of someone who have you know been through trauma it, your body becomes very foreign to you mm. and that's definitely something that I wanted to 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 put on screen you yeah. know um, all this to say that it might not be a film that is that, that makes people very comfortable, and uh, yeah. I think that definitely has to be said um, about cannibalism. It's also I was also thinking about when I was doing research about the film. I was I came across this short story by this Chinese writer Lu Xun, who mm -hmm. who talks about this guy who starts uh, losing his mind, and um, he he reads the classical texts who, that feature that feature about virtue and. Yeah. and morality and they, he thinks that all the texts are talking about cannibalism or telling you to okay. eat people. So yeah. it's a kind of like a, whatever he knew that was his history and his tradition turning themselves against him. Right. Uh, so, so that was definitely what I was thinking about and yeah. Um, yeah. yeah um, for me in the, in the ending of the movie there is a scene uh, which really just sticked with me. It's uh, the scene when Daniel's and Vicky's face kind of gets projected onto right. onto each other, and it really reminded me of uh, Bergman's persona. Uh, there is yeah. a there is a similar sequence in yeah. in, in that movie as yeah. well. Um, so I was wondering if there were like any sort of influences um, yeah. from from a broader cinematic world. Yeah, uh, well, I'm very influenced by B-grade horror movies. I okay, think yeah, it's, yeah I, well, that's, yeah, that because comes through. I love the way things don't make sense. Like, things never yeah. really make sense in horror movies. They're yeah. just there for the shock value almost. Yeah. And uh, well, I think if you want to talk about it in a you know, flippant way, it's a shock value. But in another way, it's the, 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 how the image can really affect you. Right. Physically, you know. Yeah. So, um, but narratively, I'm very interested in how things don't make sense because it's a way of jamming logic, you know. Yeah. And I feel like we need to jam logic in order to produce new logic. Yeah. Um, but but in terms of like the last scene, definitely one of the biggest, one of the actual uh, visual references we used was Kenneth Anger because okay. um, especially yeah. with the lighting and the. The way all this, the superimpositions happen. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, of course, that was also to literally put Vicky's face and Daniel's face together, yeah. and it becomes one inseparable yeah. whole. Right. Uh, that was definitely the intention as well. Yeah, yeah. I see. 
it's good that you mentioned this um, disrupting um, traditional logic, yeah. which then allows for creating new logic or creating uh, new ways of looking and new ways of thinking. Yeah. Um, because I thought that that was very prominent throughout the movie, especially regarding um, traditional binaries, uh, yeah. in a way, because Daniel's character lives in a gay relation right. in a gay relationship, but then abuses uh, sexually Vicky as well, and then there is Vicky and her relationship to her brother is also complicated on, on, a, on a racial level as well. Um, so I was wondering if this was something that you deliber deliberately chose to do. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, also to uh, to interrogate my not interrogate, but to you know to make myself uh, my position unsafe. I think um, as a gay man, um, as a gay cis man, especially you, we we start to you know take some of our kind of. Um, well, firstly, I have to say that you know homosexuality is still illegal in Singapore. So okay. we, you know, it's quite a different conversation right. from the West. Yeah. So you know, gay men in Singapore obviously are in the position of victims. Right. You know, obviously uh, in terms of law yeah. by the state. You know, so I think it's also very comfortable to exist in this bubble of victimhood and mm -hmm. not be able and not question our own uh, privileges. For example, mm. for example, yeah. being a cis man. Um, and, and, and especially me as a gay male director, we are uh, sometimes uh, our victimhood allows us to uh, neglect certain things that we might be able to inflict on others. Yeah. So that was very important for me. Yeah. Yeah. And do you consider this as a particularly queer way of, of filmmaking in a way? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, because that's also what what I sensed, um, and I felt like that there are sort of um, references to queer cinema. Um, the film utilizes uh, the tools of camp uh, very well and uh, and very visibly. Um, so yeah, I don't know what was what was your imagination behind? behind yeah, all definitely. That. I, I think I come from the same lineage as, like I mentioned, Kenneth Anger and yeah. of course Jack Smith. When you talk mm, about yeah. the close-ups, you yeah. know, and the vibrations yeah, of the yeah. close-up. But uh, but you know, I don't think that was like extremely conscious on my mind when I was think, thinking of the film. I think that yeah. was the kind of the basis. Queer is kind of like the basis where I come from, yes. that, and that I just uh, very instinctively insert myself yeah. into. But you know, I think uh, more than that, like we, the way we use the horror genre is a kind of queering of the genre. Of, yeah. That is, of course, there is a genre of films that is the rape revenge film. Yeah. You know, which you can say that I would think, I would hope that this film is um, trying to subvert. You know, in a way. Mm. Yeah. yeah. At the end of uh, of the film. Um, the characters say, you are just a copy, a reflection of all of us. Yeah. Um, is this sort of the thesis? Is this kind of the message that you wanted to work around uh, yeah. from the beginning? Yeah, I mean, uh, as an artist, um, you are always thinking about what you create, right? And what you uh, bring to the world. And I think there's always a conversation in art where as I always feel like the artist is possessed in a way mm -hmm. and yeah. these demons force themselves out on the screen. Yeah. In a way I have, I guess, a very helpless view of humanity. But at the same time, it also comes from when, you know, you experience something extremely horrible in your life. You feel like you are not the original or you are not the, mm. you are just a copy of what you were, you know. Yeah. So you, you you can never have that same unquestioning relationship to yourself yeah. anymore. Everything becomes questionable. Yeah. In a way. Even the glass on the table is yeah. questionable. Yeah. And, then, and then it provides new ways of thinking and right. new ways of seeing. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Well, then, yeah, thank you so much thank for you the so interview. Much. And you. I wish you all the best for the festival. Thank and you. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>